This is the morning of July 14, 2021. Laravel 8.50.0 was just released yesterday and it has a lot of awesome new additions. I am Mohamed Said, and in this video series I share with you the awesome things the Laravel team and community has been working on lately. So without much ado, let's set off. The first thing we have today is a quality of life additions that allows us to cancel a notification that is currently in queue. Have you been in a situation where you dispatched a notification to the queue, but right before this notification is due to be processed by the workers, you want to cancel it? Like if you are sending an order confirmation notification and it's sent to the queue and you want and right before the queue worker picks it up, that order was canceled. So it doesn't make any sense to send this notification. In Laravel 8.50.0, you can do that. Here we are inside the confirm order notification class and to be able to cancel a notification that's in queue we need to implement a should send method. Inside this method you may return false if the notification shouldn't be sent. In our example we don't want to send the notification if the order was cancelled. So we are going to return this check inside it so we're going to return this order is cancelled. Now if the order is cancelled this check will return false and the notification will not be sent. Another great addition to the framework in this version is the ability to prune eloquent model instances and the definition of pruning is removing unnecessary matter. So in our case this feature allows you to periodically remove model instances from your system that are no longer needed. Let's take a look at this flight model. We want to remove all flights that were cancelled for over a month. To do that we are going to add a prunable trait to the model. So inside the model class we are going to use the prunable trait. After that we are going to implement a prunable function. This method should return an eloquent query builder that resolves the models that are no longer needed. So in our case here we are going to return an eloquent builder instance that filters models that were cancelled for over a month. And to get the pruning to actually happen we will need to schedule the model prune command to run daily. So we will go to our console kernel and inside the schedule method we are going to schedule the model prune command to run daily. This command will automatically detect prunable models within your application's app models directory and remove them by running the prunable method to find which instances to remove. You may also implement a pruning method that will be called before each model instance is deleted. You can use this method to run any cleanup that may be required, like delete any related models. So in our case here we might want to delete a ticket that belongs to a flight before the flight gets pruned. But if you don't care about running any pruning methods for cleanup and you don't listen to the deleting or deleted model events, you may use the mass prunable trait instead. So mass prunable. And we will delete or remove this pruning method because it won't be called. When using mass prunable instead of prunable, the models will get deleted using mass deletion queries, which is much faster and more performant than deleting each model one by one. Our last feature for today deals with a long time pain point that has been bothering Laravel developers for years. You see, in Laravel you can extract validated attributes from user input, so you are sure when you pass these attributes to a model, you are sure that these attributes are valid and safe except when dealing with arrays. Let me show you this problem in action. Here we are validating an array of users and each user must have a name. We may use the results of this validated data to create users in our system. Each user will have a given name. If we go to the browser and trigger this route while providing some input, let's say we will provide one user with a name and we check the results, you can see that the return value has one element and this element has a name attribute only. And if we provide any attribute outside the array that wasn't validated, like for example, let's provide here a company equal Laravel, hit enter, we can see that this attribute won't be returned because it wasn't validated. 
However, if we provide an attribute inside the array that isn't validated, it will be returned. So instead of providing a company attribute, we are going to add another attribute to the array of users here. And if we check the value, we can see that it has one element, but now this element has two attributes, a name and an age. This age wasn't validated. This is something we don't want. So in Laravel version 8.50.0, we added a method that you can call in the put method of a service provider that will give us the desired behavior. So if we go to the app service provider and inside the put method, we're going to use the validator facade and call the exclude unvalidated array keys method. And now when we visit the browser and refresh, check the element inside the array and we can see it only returned the validated attributes inside the array. Because it's technically a breaking change, we didn't make it the default behavior inside the core. We chose to make it a method that you can decide to use it in your application if you want. But maybe in future major releases, we are going to make this the default behavior. Speaking of major releases, last week, the creator of Laravel, Taylor Otwell, announced that the next major release of Laravel or Laravel 9 will be in January 2022. He wrote a blog post explaining this decision and clearing that we are going to continue delivering exciting new improvements to Laravel 8 release series until Laravel 9 comes. Check this post on the Laravel official blog for more information. Now let's move to a quick update on Laravel Forge. If you are monitoring your application performance using Blackfire.io, you can now upgrade to Blackfire version 2 using a single click. Inside the integration section of the server settings screen, you can click on the upgrade Blackfire version and this will upgrade it to version 2.0. And if you are just going to install Blackfire, Forge will install version 2 by default from now on. We are constantly working on Forge to make it easier for you to provision and manage servers that run your PHP and Laravel applications. If you haven't tried Forge yet, go to forge.laravel.com and create an account. And that's all I have for you today. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you get notified whenever we post new content. Have a great day, enjoy coding and see you later.